to start out? You want to start? I'll start. Right. Or we can continue with the music. Welcome back, everyone, to the Weekly Flare. We're back to talk about robots. Chris, everyone watching, listening, did you see Pacific Rim? I did not. What? I still have it. I just still have it. Chris, <laughs> you're killing me, man. I know. Killing me. This story was perfect for Pacific Rim. Did you see Real Spill? No. Chris! <laughs> what are you doing with I've, your life? I've seen Chappie and iRobot. Neither of those relate to this story. <laughs> even it. close. Dang it. Oh, oh my goodness. Man. Okay. Anyone who saw Real Spill or Pacific Rim is going to love this story. Unless they thought those movies were terrible. And I still might like the story, actually, because robots are cool. Okay, so Chris, I showed you that uh, picture of that robot. Yes. So this comp this Boston, no, I think it was Boston, somewhere in the Northeast. They made this giant, six-ton, two-person piloted robot, okay? They can shoot three-pound balls of paint, 100 miles an hour. Oh, my gosh. Okay? This thing is huge okay and now the best part is they didn't just make this and show it off and like yeah this cool robot we made it has like treads and it can like move around and like they showed it like shooting like a car and like they shot this ball at the side of like a sedan and just like hit it just like splattered the whole side in paint it was great okay now i would have showed you before but as you know and no one else does i was having some internet issues yes that are all resolved and now we're on time on your cable 50 megabit down, 5 megabit up. It's going to be awesome. But uh, it took like an hour. It's something that should take like 10 minutes. We should. We usually record at 7.45, but today we're recording at 8.30. Yeah, we're going to start till almost 8.30. So, yeah. Anyways, um, now I've, what was I saying about robots? Oh, right. Splat, I would show you the video. Yes. But um, I didn't. But, dude, this was so funny. So they made this video, the, the guys that made this new robot. Okay, they were wearing American flags as capes. And they're walking through like where like it looks like a manufacturing warehouse to build like a giant robot. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about like our robot's like, six tons. And they're calling out this like uh, it's all dubbed in Japanese for this Japanese company that earlier made a four and a half ton robot that has like Gatling guns and it's piloted by a single person. Okay, and they like called him out. They're like walking, like, yeah, we made this robot, whatever it was called. And like, it's six tons. We put, and because we're Americans, we put big guns. And like, it shows him like putting this giant like gun. I was like, it can shoot a three pound ball of paint, a hundred miles an hour. And it shows like them like shooting this car and just like getting decimated with paint. Oh my God. And it's hilarious. And they're like, Japan, you have a robot. We have a robot. Only one thing needs to happen a battle. And they called them out on this video that they want to have a giant robot battle. And they're like, name the place. And in one year, we'll have the robot battle. This better again, be this better be on TV. Oh, man. Dude, if this happens, that'd be so cool. Oh, yeah. Now, the guys are like, yeah, our robots want to be modified slightly to be combat ready. Because, like, you know, people are going to be in, so they want to kill them. But, yeah. It... It's like if you saw Real Steel where there was remote controlled and they were fighting each other, or even Pacific Rim where they were piloting inside of them fighting the giant monsters from the Pacific Rim. This is great. It's going to be like that, I'm pretty sure. Good. It's, uh, if this happens, if this happens, it's going to be like the robot battle to end all robots. Like there's that show, like the robot battle show. Yeah, like battle bots or whatever, something. Whatever, I don't know, yeah, whatever that show's called, where they like make little robots and battle mm -hmm. them. Or even if you saw like Big Hero 6, where he like, they battle the little robots. It's going to make all that look like child's play. Both literally and figuratively. Mm. Because this is going to be awesome. And I really hope it happens. So we'll wait and see if Japan applies, and if they do, we'll be sure and keep you guys updated. And Chris, I'll keep you updated. Well, apparently I also, watch movies. you need to see Pacific Rim. Oh. And Real Steel was actually pretty good if you like robots mm -hmm. and Hugh Jackman boxing. That was good. Yeah. But Pacific Rim definitely, definitely was a good watch. Um, if you ever bring back my other movies and games you're borrowing, you can borrow Pacific Rim. I told myself when I was driving home that I had to bring it Every time. Every single time. Every time. It's, in my, it's in, literally in my hands. It's all good. 
It's not like I'm dying to like watch any of the movies yet. Or we'll play Red Dead Redemption. Or play Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> but Chris, we like technology on this show. Yes. We. I. Some would even say we love technology on this show. This show is sponsored in part by technology. Um, we record. We record using technology. And you guys see us via technology. Technology basically allows the amateurs like us to have our own show that people watch and seem to enjoy. They keep coming back. Mm -hmm. So that's at least maybe they come back for laughs. I don't know. But they come back. And technology has kind of advanced very fast lately to the point of where now there's smart watches and Google Glass and virtual reality goggles and augmented reality goggles and all sorts of sensors that monitor your heart rate and your blood pressure and the list goes on and on. There's smart shoes. There's probably smart clothes. Chris, where do you see the future of wearable technology going? I mean, we've had hearing aids forever. That's basically, yeah. that's the original wear. Well, I guess glasses are probably yeah. the original wearable technology. I did see a video of a guy there. I think there were normal glasses, but he was colorblind. Mm -hmm. And the specialized glasses helped him see color for the first time. Really? And so I thought it was really cool. Now, how can we be sure he was actually seeing color and not just more distinct shades of whatever he was seeing? Uh, I, from what the everyone, everything said, it was just he was see everything. He just was awestruck by what he saw. Okay, so it was probably pretty likely he was seeing color mm -hmm. for the first yes. time. Now, Chris, what if I told you that color doesn't really exist and it's all made up in our mind? Really? Well. I don't personally ascribe to that, but that's, there's this thing that scientists are debating whether color is real or whether it's something that our mind makes up based off of the way light reflects off of things, which is how color yeah, well, works, it's really, yeah. of course, as we know. Um, so the debate, debate, the debate is whether or not color is an actual thing or if it's just something we kind of make up in our mind. Mm -hmm. I guess they started talking about that dress con convert. You know, yeah, it kind of came right back now. up because of that. Yeah. I mean, I've seen a certain type of blue mm -hmm. that's a very like powdered blue, mm -hmm. and some people see it as blue, but I see it as white, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. I've seen that happen. But that could just be because of the way our eyes... Reflecting off light? You know, if you have different eye things, or if your eyes have you know, irregularities in them. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of things that could affect that, which is why there's a huge group of scientists, or maybe it's small and they're just very vocal, that say that color isn't real. It's just made up in our mind. I so guess we might Maybe what we need is a technology that can tell us color is real or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. So other than glasses that allow you to see color, because that's already here now, right? Yes. Where do you see the future of wearable technology wearable? going? And yeah, wearable. Well, I guess, we have Google Glasses mm -hmm. and augmented reality, and those are all coming. Yes, I, I guess the, one of the first things I saw about wearable technology was when you or your brother would come to church with um, those shirts that would light up. Okay, mm -hmm. that was kind of cool as well, and you can reposition them and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we can go from head to toe. Um, hearing aids. No, the hearing aids have been around for a long time. We have that new thing that came out where you wear it around your head mm -hmm. and it will help you regain energy and all this kind of stuff by reflective brain or like oh, brain yeah, waves. Yeah, the same we looked at. We, we looked did. We didn't show, right? I don't think we looked at it or in depth with it. We just talked That's about it. We, we said something about it. but So I don't really know a lot about it, but it it bounces the the frequencies in your mind and your in the Brain waves, I guess you yeah, could say. Yeah, the brain waves is what it claimed. Mm -hmm. this, th that could be good for energy boosting. It could be good for people who suffer with ADHD. ADHD. Yeah, it could just help you stay focused even. Exactly. Uh, so we've got that. You know, um, What about pants? Where pants. do you see wearable pants going for tech? Um, I guess the biggest struggle I have during work is... When to go to the bathroom. No. Oh, okay. Is... It either is really hot or really cold. Mm -hmm. um, so you want pants with an air conditioner on them? I, I want pants that are cooler. And I guess they've done that with t-shirts. Mm -hmm. But possibly something more of the jean fabric or the jean style that something I like that to wear. Something that you can wear to work. Yes. Uh, something comfortable, something... Um, so you want a material that looks like jeans and is tough like jeans, but is cool. Yes. 
And by cool, you don't mean cool to wear, but it feels but, cool. To, yes. Because jeans aren't cool to wear, man. Come on. Or it's by, all about the, the cargo pants. Or vice versa. We can put heaters in cars, on car seats. Yeah, we can massage your butt in cars. Exactly. So why not make... Pants that can massage your butt. Yes. Battery powered or... That did uh, not sound safe. Solar powered. How about nuclear powered? Nuclear powered. That sounds safe. No. Nuclear powered <laughs> pants. There could be some things. If we're, like I said, what's... You know, that's a good point, though, about the car seats that have the, like, warm room. Mm-hmm. Why don't we have, like, shirts or pants that can do that? Mm-hmm. Is it because of a power problem? Because of a safety issue? I would say safety. Safety, you think? Mm-hmm. They, did, they do have those hot hands that mm-hmm. I have at work that I've never opened yet. But you break them, you shake them, mm-hmm. whatever you do. You put them in your shoes. You put them in your shoes, put them in your gloves, put them in your jacket. They say never put it to direct contact. So, how would you go about washing without breaking It would seal? be an insert. You would have to take the insert mm-hmm. out, or it would be dry clean only. Dry clean only, yeah. Uh, dry clean only. So, we've got that issue. I mean, you know, there, it's, it's a technology it would have to develop, you know. It mm-hmm. wouldn't be perfect right off the bat. But I think, I like where you're going with, especially with the heater thing, because then in, the cold, in cold weather, you know, it, you'd be able to be a lot more comfortable. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to wear layers and layers. So then when you go inside, you have to take off the layers and layers. But yes. you could just turn the heater off in your clothes. Mm-hmm. And then you don't have to carry around like 10 jackets and like store them somewhere. And then put them all back on before you go outside. Mm-hmm. I like it. I've got some more, I guess. You know, after, okay, after, what else you after talking about this. Uh... I did see someone who, this isn't really technology, but it's more of the engineering side. Mm-hmm. A guy made a shoe that can be worn throughout preschool to 12th grade. It grows with the foot? It does not grow with the foot. How I saw him do it, he has, you know, the shoe might sit like this, mm-hmm. and it's got snap buttons on it. Mm-hmm. So when the, when the kid's foot grows, you just snap it, you snap more on there, and it you know, you put it to a second. So it has a bunch of material bunched up and you just yes. unsnap it. And you just snap it. it. It's like a snap shoe. It's like a sandal. That's really weird. The, but it's really cool. It's Where's all that material go? Does it, it like stuff inside the shoe? I think so. Wouldn't it's, that like be very uncomfortable for your foot? Well, if you think about it like this, and then your foot gets bigger, so he's going to take this snap off, and then you're going to place it here. Oh, okay. So I see. So it lays on. Yeah. It like wraps around itself. Yes. And then you're, okay. Mm-hmm. So we've got that. I'd like to see something of that nature. I'd like to see something. That could work. Um, we can go in depth, man. We can go far. Man, there's a lot you can do. I guess one of the biggest things that I struggle with with work is that when I wear gloves, I get cold out there, and sometimes I have struggles taping or. Yeah, uh, gloves are very difficult to get gloves that with typing that you can either they're either warm. Or like rugged if you're with uh, work yes. gloves. Or they're really thin so you can still feel what you're doing, but they tear easily and they don't insulate. I would say... Uh, it's hard to get a glove that's work that's good for working with, but you can also still... Type it. You have good agility. Yes. I would say design a glove that is very, very thin, but very, very strong. Have you tried those mechanics gloves? I have a set and I, I still have I really shoot. like those for shooting. Okay. I, I guess I struggle with... Taping some because some people will do this. Some of them mm-hmm. pull the tape, so the it's hard because tape really sticks to gloves. Yes, yeah, so the residue. And then gets, you get like fiber on the tape, mm-hmm. and, and it looks yeah. terrible. It's all black, and it's something like that. I would say very. You need like a leather thing. glove for that. Yes, but then like you can't feel anything. You can't. You can't move your fingers. You can't. Yeah. You can't in type. That's one of the struggles. That's a good point. I agree on the glove technology. Glove technology kind of is terrible, mm-hmm. and battery technology is kind of terrible. Yes. Although we've talked about some batteries this year that are look promising. Yes. Would you do anything with teeth or mouth? I I would I would leave the mouth alone for okay. the time for being. The time being. I think um, I would start if I was gonna start anywhere on the face, I would probably start with the eyes. Because so, a lot of people either are really blind in their eyes or they're missing an eye. Uh, and if you had a cyborg eye, you could just replace it. Uh, so with people with night blindness, where would that go? Okay, so night blindness, you got night vision goggles already. I would just make them more affordable. Okay. Uh, so they don't make everything terrible shades of green, but you can actually see what's going on, like a normal color scheme. Um, so night blindness, I think, could be solved easier than 
one would think, but I don't know. It's all about how your eye perceives it. And I, I don't know how the eye works necessarily. I know the fundamentals, but I don't understand the way the eye takes what it sees and then the brain processes that to give you the picture. So like, there's a, it depends on like if the fact that they're not blind is just because like their eye doesn't get enough light quick enough, or if it's an issue of like the brain can't process it. It really would depend on why they're night blind, mm -hmm. which is why I think the easiest place to start is either with augmented reality, like we're already starting to do, like with Google Glass or HoloLens, or you know stuff for the ears like hearing aids, um, the headphones that like cut sound but then can amplify sound. Also, um, that kind of stuff. That stuff already exists. If you go to Mission Impossible Four. Mm -hmm. with his contacts that were able to take pictures. Exactly. You're thinking about contacts or you're thinking of more Well, right outside? now we're still in the glasses area. Okay. I think we're going to get to the contact area. Okay. I really think we'll get there. Uh, I do. I know that's crazy. And I, if you think I'm crazy, I understand completely. But I really think that we'll get maybe not quite to a contact lens, but definitely something more concealable and easier to carry. Okay. Like I said, it might just be a cyborg eye, though. It might not be a contact. It might actually have your whole eye replaced. Mm. Uh, anything with belts or shoes? Well, Batman had a utility belt. True. Anything? I don't know what you would do with a belt that would make it special, other than being able to tell you, like, hey, man, stop eating so much. You're getting yeah. fat. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't, there's not much there's your not belt much. does other than hold your pants up or hold other stuff. Mm -hmm. Now... I'm sure some clever scientist or engineer or fashion person somewhere will figure out some other use for a belt that would be cool for wearable technology. Mm -hmm. I just don't see where, because that's, I don't know, I just don't see what you can do with it other than hold your pants up or hold stuff. Sounds like we've got a lot of stuff. Shoes, though. There's a lot of stuff you can do with oh, shoes. Oh, definitely. Uh, it sounds like we've got a lot of great ideas and a lot of stuff that we've covered that are already around. I think a lot of this is going towards, but I like the clothes thing. That's a good mm -hmm. I like that. If that happens, just remember, Chris predicted it first. All right, Chris, we're about to wrap up. That's fine. So do you have anything this week that you would like to plug? Um, as your refrigerator makes ice. Yeah, it's been making that weird noise lately. Okay. Hopefully that doesn't come up. But... Let's see here. Um, actually, I did see a movie. Okay, what'd you see? Real quick, Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz. Have you seen it? Uh, I've seen parts of it. It's actually a pretty good movie if you guys like the that type of style. Uh, British comedy, pretty funny. Check it out. It's on Netflix. I'd say watch it. Okay. If you like, if you can handle sure. it. Um, but that was pretty good. Warp Tour is coming up. Yes. I'll be uh, I'll be there on Tuesday, so I might cover something small of that and see how much fun. When I is Warp Tour? It is on Tuesday. This coming Tuesday. Tuesday. Cool. So I'll, I'll probably, I won't cover what happened, but I'll cover my experiences, what I experienced my first year of Warp Tour. Um, Absolutely. We might, are we going to try to have a guest next week? We'll see. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess we'll see. Okay. Well, here's what I have to plug. Chris, we've been podcasting now for 25 episodes. Mm -hmm. And we have our Patreon page. If people want to support us on Patreon, they can. But Chris, we now have an affiliate, an actual affiliate that's a great offer for our listeners and for us. So, have you heard of Audible? I have. Do you like reading? Not so much. No, but do you like listening? Yes. Okay. So, if you go to audibletrial.com slash theweeklyflare, you can sign up for a 30-day free trial and listen to all sorts of free audiobooks. Chris, I know you are into the female dramas, so you can listen to all of those teen female dramas. I can try. Like Twilight. I know how much you were into the Twilight series. Oh, sure. I know that was your big one. You can listen to that on Audible, I think. I think it's on there. I don't know. But it helps out the show, and it helps out Audible, and it helps out you listening to free audiobooks for 30 days. And if you like the service, you can sign up and get some free audiobooks. Awesome. Or you can just go to our Patreon page and support us there. Definitely. Or do both. We do a lot of stuff uh, after the fact. After, after we record here, we might do uh, a movie spoiler. Um, we do that. We've done two. We've done two. One is on Patreon. One should be up on YouTube. Okay. If it's not, it's going to go up this weekend. Mm -hmm. So we do stuff like that. We'll cover stuff. Um, we might start doing some other stuff, but we're gaining more stuff on Patreon. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to this summer, over the summer, try and come up with some ideas and hit it hard in the fall. Perfect. Which is coming up soon. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'd like to start like in August or September. 
Okay. So September would be the fall, August would be the end of summer. Perfect. All right. You can find us, The Weekly Flare, at theweeklyflare.com. All of our show notes are there. Our Twitter feed's there. Our Instagram feed's there. Our Facebook feed's not there, but the Facebook not feed you. pretty much mirrors the Twitter and Instagram feed for the most part. You can find me on Twitter at James Walter, and there you can find me talking about wrestling mostly and video games and movies. And you can find Chris. I'm on some different stuff. I'm on uh, Instagram. Uh, that's all on my bio, I guess you can say. It's fight underscore with underscore heart. I don't post that much, but hey, if you follow me, I'll follow you back. Yeah. I'll check out your profile, and uh, I'll like yeah. some pictures on there. Uh, I'm on Facebook at facebook.com slash fight with heart. That's with two T's at the end. Don't get that one wrong. Uh, the, two T's. The Twitter. Like two chains. <laughs> the Twitter is uh, never lose heart. That's all one word. Follow me. I'll follow you back. I'll check out your tweets. I might retweet something. I'll probably shout you out. If you guys did that today, I'll... I'll shout you guys out. For we'll check them after the recording Definitely. right now and talk to you. Definitely. So, um, yeah, I guess that's where you guys can find us. And um, I guess our half year will be next week. So we hit 25 right. and our half year will be next week. Next week will be six months old. Yes. Cool beans. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone, and listening. And we'll see you guys again in seven days. Peace. <laughs>